The whisper from beyond NASA has confirmed that Voyager 1, the most distant human-made object ever launched, is once again sending usable information back to Earth. More than 15 billion miles away, drifting far beyond the warmth and influence of our Sun, Voyager 1 exists in a realm humanity has never physically entered. Interstellar Space The cold, dark medium between stars. A place not empty, but so thin and vast that even light struggles to tell its story. Voyager has never been a loud spacecraft. It does not shout across the cosmos. It whispers. A thin, patient radio whisper, so faint it must cross billions of kilometers and still arrive at Earth as something engineers must gently coax out of noise. For decades, that whisper carried routine truths. Temperatures. Voltages. Spin rates. Timing signals. The quiet bookkeeping of a machine that refused to quit, long after its designers retired, long after the world that launched a change. That is why the moment Voyager's transmissions became irregular felt unsettling. Not because of alarms. Not because of dramatic failure messages. But because of deviation. Voyager does not send messages and sentences. It sends measurements. Raw numbers. Cold facts. Any meaning must be inferred from how those numbers drift away from decades of carefully measured baselines. When engineers noticed that previously stable telemetry began behaving in unfamiliar ways, it raised a deeper question. Was this simply the slow, expected failure of aging hardware? The quiet unraveling of a machine built in the 1970s? Or was Voyager encountering something new? Something external? Something it was never designed to survive? By the time Voyager crossed the heliopause, the boundary where the sun's influence weakens and the interstellar medium takes over, it entered an environment no spacecraft had ever sampled directly before. Out there, plasma behaves differently. Magnetic fields change character. Particle populations shift in energy, density, and direction. Voyager's instruments were built to notice those changes. That is their purpose. What drew attention was not a single faulty sensor. Not one failing component. But subtle inconsistencies across systems. Particle readings that no longer matched expectations. Plasma wave behavior that drifted outside known models. Telemetry that degraded unevenly, selectively, rather than gradually. Deep space failures are usually slow. Predictable. Graceful. This was not. Such patterns matter because they hint at external stress rather than internal decay. Interstellar space is not empty. It is thin, but dynamic. Threaded with magnetic fields. Filled with charged particles accelerated to extreme energies. Shock fronts can travel through this medium, compressing plasma, twisting magnetic fields, and reshaping everything in their path. If Voyager encountered a region of heightened particle activity, or turbulence in the interstellar medium, its instruments would detect it and its electronics could be affected by the very environment they were attempting to measure. Possible explanations range widely. Local interstellar turbulence. A denser region of gas and dust. Or broader galactic influences pressing inward from beyond our solar neighborhood. Voyager, sitting far beyond the sun's protective influence, would be the first to notice. And that realization is where the story stops being dis- When deep space reaches home the implications extend closer to home than most people are prepared to admit. The heliosphere is not just a scientific boundary. It is a system. A vast, invisible structure inflated by the solar wind, stretching far beyond the outer planets, acting as a living buffer between our solar system and the raw environment of the galaxy. It slows. It deflects. It reshapes what would otherwise stream inward unchecked. 
but it is not permanent. And it is not invulnerable. If conditions outside this boundary change, pressure builds. The shape of the heliosphere responds. It compresses. It distorts. And when that balance shifts, the effects do not remain at the edge. They propagate inward. Silently. Relentlessly. Cosmic radiation does not arrive as fire or light. It arrives as particles. Charged. Energetic. Capable of passing through materials that feel solid to us. Earth's atmosphere protects life on the surface. Our magnetic field bends many of those particles away. But protection is not uniform. Satellites operate above most of that shielding. Astronauts live within its margins. High-altitude aviation brushes against it. Electronics, built for efficiency rather than resilience, absorb the stress first. A single energetic particle can flip a bit. Corrupt memory. Trigger a fault. Now multiply that across thousands of satellites, millions of components, systems that were never designed for sustained radiation stress. Navigation depends on precision timing. Timing depends on stable electronics. Stable electronics depend on an environment that does not suddenly change character. Communication networks rely on clean signal paths. Weather models rely on uninterrupted observation. Banking systems rely on clocks that do not drift. Emergency services rely on all of it working at once. A disturbance in space does not announce itself with noise. It announces itself with errors with outages, with systems that fail in ways engineers struggle to explain. This is how deep space touches daily life. Not dramatically, but systemically. Voyager's data also forces a quieter reconsideration of how we think about our place in the galaxy. The solar system is not isolated. It is not sovereign. It is embedded. Moving. Traveling through a medium that has structure, density, and history. The sun pushes outward. The galaxy pushes back. Between them lies a boundary that breathes. That shifts. That responds to forces far beyond human control. If Voyager encountered a denser interstellar region, or a changing magnetic environment, it suggests our cosmic neighborhood is not static. It changes on timescales longer than human memory, but short enough to matter to technology. There is something deeply unsettling about realizing that stability is conditional. That the calm we experience may be the product of circumstance, not permanence. Voyager was never designed to warn us. It carries no alarm system. No intent. No awareness. Its longevity is an accident of engineering excellence and good fortune. Yet here it is, decades beyond its planned mission, functioning as an unintended sentinel at the edge of the sun's domain. When a spacecraft like Voyager finally goes silent, it does not simply stop speaking. It removes a sense organ. A way for humanity to feel the environment beyond sight. If its final clear data reflects environmental stress, that silence becomes heavier. Not because of what we know, but because of what we can no longer measure. Whether the anomalies represent a passing disturbance or the beginning of a longer-term shift remains uncertain. Science does not rush to conclusions. It accumulates evidence. It argues carefully. But uncertainty does not equal irrelevance. Some risks announce themselves only once. Quietly. Briefly. Then disappear into the dark. The universe does not need to be violent to be consequential. It does not need intention to exert pressure. Some of the most powerful forces operate without spectacle. Embedded in telemetry. 
hidden in statistical deviation, visible only to machines patient enough to listen across billions of miles. Voyager 1 continues its outward drift, its power diminishing, its voice fading, but its message intact. Deep space is not a distant abstraction. It is an environment, dynamic, active, capable of reaching inward and shaping conditions on a small, fragile world. And whether we are watching or not, we are part of that system.